After you've downloaded the application installer for SQL Server and Tools, you'll be able to install SQL Server and the SQL Server Management Console in one single installation. This is the screen you'll see when you first start up the setup application. The first step is to check your system configuration using the System Configuration Checker tool. Click the link. The System Configuration Checker looks for a set of conditions on your system and walks you through required steps to upgrade your system where necessary. Here's the results on my system. It checks consistency validation in the registry, looks for unsupported SQL Server products, and other features. Most specifically, check for the Windows PowerShell. This is a set of tools that are used by the installer. If they're not present, you'll need to download and install Windows PowerShell, which is a free download from the Microsoft website. If you see a failure indicated on this line, click the link and follow the steps to go to the Microsoft website, download the PowerShell tool, and install it. If you see a combination of past and warning indicators, you're ready to go to the next step. Click OK to continue. Now, go to the installation by clicking the installation link on the left, then click New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add Features to an Existing Installation. On my system, I don't have any SQL Server instances installed yet. If you do have SQL Server instances installed, your results will differ. On this screen, the SQL Server setup application checks for certain support rules. Once again, if you see any failures in the report, you'll need to follow the steps that are recommended to fix your system and get ready for the next setup step. If you see that the operation completed successfully, you can click OK. In the next step, the setup application installs setup support files, components that are required for SQL Server setup. Assuming you don't see any failure indicators, click the Install button. It takes a few moments to install the setup support files. After that step is completed, you're now ready to actually install SQL Server and the supporting tools. Once again, the setup application runs a few tests. And if you see any failures, click the links and follow the recommended steps. If you see a combination of past and warning messages, click the Next button, then indicate that you're going to be installing a free edition of SQL Server. Click Next again. Review the license terms, and if you accept them, click the appropriate option and click Next. On this screen, you indicate which SQL Server features you want to install. You must install the Database Engine Services and the SQL Server Management Tools labeled Basic in order to follow the tutorials in the rest of the video series. The SQL Client Connectivity SDK may be disabled, but if it is enabled, you can select it if you want to do advanced SQL Server programming. SQL Server Replication is optional for this tutorial, but I recommend selecting it. And then once again, click Next. On the Instance Configuration screen, you indicate the named instance of SQL Server that you want to install. The default name is simply SQL Express. Accept the named instance of SQL Express and the instance ID of the same name, and accept the default root directory. Notice that SQL Server will be installed in a directory named mssql10.sql express, and click Next. On the Disk Space Requirements screen, you'll see an indication of how much disk space is required and how much is available on your disk. Make sure that you have adequate space before you continue. Now click Next. On this screen, you're going to indicate the account that's going to be used for each SQL Server. Click the down arrow to select an account name and select NT Authority slash System. The complete string may differ depending on whether you're working on Windows Vista or Windows XP, but definitely select the System account. You shouldn't need to provide a password at this point. The SQL Server browser should use the same account name. Click Next. Now indicate the authentication mode. By default, you use the Windows authentication mode, meaning that you're authenticating based on your membership in the Windows security framework. Instead, you're going to select Mixed Mode, which means that you're going to allow both Windows authentication and SQL Server authentication where you log into SQL Server using a username and password. The SQL Server System Administrator account has an automatic name of SA.
for System Administrator. You'll need to enter a password at this point, and the setup application wants you to use a strong password that consists of both letters and numbers. I'm going to use a password that's easy to remember, a password 123. I recommend that you use the same sort of password for your local system development, but make sure you use a stronger password that includes special characters and a mixture of upper and lowercase characters on an actual production installation of SQL Server. I'm going to click Add Current User. I'm logged in as a user named ASP.NET ESST for Essential Training on my machine. This Windows user will have unrestricted access to the SQL Server database engine and all of the database that are installed in it. Now click Next. Select options as you like for usage and error reporting to Microsoft. I'm going to leave those options turned off and click Next again. Next, the setup application determines if the installation process is going to be blocked in any way. Assuming that you get a pass on all of the tests, you're ready to click Next one more time. Check the summary of all the installation options that you've selected and then finally click install to start the installation process. You should now be able to walk away from your computer and allow the installation process to complete. When it's complete, SQL Server and the SQL Server Administrator, the basic version, will have been installed and you should be ready to set up a database for the first time. If you have any problems with the installation process, check the tech support options on the Microsoft website for SQL Server Express installation.